Sebastian and Robert from Part-Time Scientists. Guys, this is your second team summit. Can you tell us what have been the biggest developments with your team since February? Uh, our biggest development has always been the uh, second generation rover prototype, the Asimov Junior R2 edition. And what would you say are the biggest differences between the first version and the newer version? We have three different development cycles and the third one is the one that is going to be space certified. So we are currently in the second one, which is quite a lot. I started the part-time science team because I always have a great passion for space exploration and I've been working on similar projects years before the Google Lunar X-Prize and Sebastian, a good friend of mine, introduced me to the Google Lunar X-Prize concept and I was pretty much amazed right now and just after one week I've decided that I really want to sign up to this competition and I've looked to all my contacts that I've got from my working experience I had so far and put together a group of people where I know I had a good starting ground to build up a, a very vital and reliable team in this regard. What kind of developments can people expect from your team over the next six months or so? Uh, obviously the most interesting thing will be the landing module prototype, which is uh, quite an important step as it shows that we have all the needed components in place for our mission and it will be the first generation model of the prototype. And when, when can we expect that? Uh, December 28th. Perfect. Excellent. We are just doing a classical approach, so meaning we will lift off with a Falcon rocket from SpaceX, doing an indirect, uh, interact, uh, indirect entry, meaning we are using a transfer module from Earth to Moon. This transfer module will be uh, acting as a lander, so uh, landing on the lunar surface to a soft landing, this is very important. From this landing module, there will, the rover will be departing and then the rover will condu um, conduct all the tasks. One thing to note about our mission planning is that we always uh, incorporate certain nice details. For example, the lander itself is equipped to do a sample return mission, which will be the first sample return mission ever done by private persons and the second sample return mission ever done in space. So, this uh, sample return mission is something we already talked about with ESA in this regard. So, you, it's quite easy, you can simply Use the lander you already have on the moon, pick up your sample, and you can use the engines that are still working. You only have a two hour time window, and you get, get it back to Earth. You both are German, and your team is German, but it seems like your audience is increasingly international. Can you talk about that expansion? Well, I wouldn't say we're German. I mean, we have 20 per people from Germany, the rest is from around the world, and uh, our audience is very international, yes. And I, I like that very much. Why go back to the moon? Because Simple to say, it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's simply cool to work on a space-related project. Many people we've encountered so far are pretty enthusiastic just when they hear about that we are, want to go back to the moon. There are a lot of people simply um, working in very big companies, as I said before with our sponsors. You just go to companies and if you meet up the right people, they're immediately all in for that, such a project because they want to do something like this themselves for years. So, Going back to the moon is not just about uh, technology, but it's about passion too. What can your fans and enthusiasts online, what can they do to support the team? Help spread the word. And the word is, hell yeah, it's rocket science. Hell yeah, it's rocket science. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, guys.